Hello! I'm coming to you live from my action couch with my cat firmly ensconced on my lap here. Uh, so if you hear some purring, that's him. Um, yeah, so I don't know, I just felt like talking about something for a bit. Uh, I was in the shower today and I was thinking about one of my favorite comic book characters and how he keeps getting shafted by, you know other comic book characters events or other major uh you know publisher wide events uh i i like a lot i mean you know i read a lot obviously uh you know comics and regular books and whatever and watch cartoons and anime features and live action movies and stuff and so, you know, you you tend to like a lot of characters, but, uh, you know, some of them you only really like sometimes, right? Yeah, you'll like a run of a character. You know, like I really love uh, Gail Simone's, uh, you know, Secret Six uh, and the way she wrote characters like Catman and Deadshot, right? And Ragdoll, uh, even Bane, right? Uh, you know, she really wrote them really well, right? And wrote different uh, different sides to them that we don't normally see, right? But outside of that, you know, like Deadshot, his uh, one shot was pretty good, but some of his Suicide Squad and stuff, I didn't super enjoy, right? Like, you know, it was good, but it was it wasn't like, oh man, Deadshot's awesome. I want to read more about him. Uh, you know, same thing with Ragdoll. Ragdoll, you know, I mean. Yeah, you know, there's he's popped up everywhere, right? I mean, the one I like is like the the third son of the original or something. I don't know, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, really, he's more just throwaway uh, villain of the week kind of deal. Uh, yeah, nothing really to write home about. And Bane, I mean. You know, Bane's been used many, many different ways, right? I mean, even in the movies, right? Uh, Batman uh, uh, and Robin's Bane there uh, is just a mindless Venom, uh, you know, berserker where he's, you know, this, uh, I don't know, assassin avatar of darkness in uh, The Dark Knight Rises, right? In the original, you know, he was he was super powerful, but he was also super smart, right? You know, he figured out who Batman was uh, all by himself, right? And, you know, went into the Batcave and, you know, uh, pretty much uh, screwed Batman up pretty bad. Broke his back. He broke the bat, right? But then he hasn't been really used great, uh, you know, after that, right? You know, oh, there's a lot of the just you know they really started to lean on the berserker thing with the venom, right? Anyway, I'm getting way off track, right? But uh, yeah, so there are characters that you know I like in the moment, like Star Lord uh, during and right after the Annihilation Wave, uh, Captain Marvel when it was Genus Vell. Uh, you know, Wonder Woman written by George Perez was great, right? Uh, yeah, and then there's characters that I'll just always love, right? You know, even when they're poorly written, uh, you know, it's just, you know, you love that guy so much that you're willing to, to you know, muscle through the pain, right? And uh, read the book. Uh, you know, uh, one of them is Cyclops. Right, I do love Cyclops. I've always have. Uh, the Cyclops, he he doesn't do well by himself, right? Uh, he's had to, you know they've tried to give him his own, uh, uh, you know, storylines or even his own comic book a few times, but it's never really worked. The you know, young Cyclops worked when uh, you know it was a time display Cyclops traveling the galaxy with his dad. Uh, you know that was pretty neat. Uh, and, you know, there's been some good stories, but a lot of them are just, you know, he's sad about losing his wife, so he leaves the X-Men and gets on a fishing boat where he meets a woman who looks exactly like his dead wife. Uh, 
you know, for sinister purposes. Sinister being the character and also his intent. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, Cyclops, yeah, he does get beat around a lot, but uh, you know, he, he exists best in the team book, so it makes sense that his fortunes follow the fortunes of, you know, the X-Men as a whole, whether he's, you know, the team leader or, you know, uh, the supreme ally commander or, you know, the the king of the mutants as he's been, right? Uh, so, you know, him, he sort of gets a pass on some of the, the shafting he's gotten. But there's one character, you know, that... Uh, I've liked for as long as I can remember, even though I can't really remember when I started liking him, because I'm not sure when it happened. Yet he's been around pretty much forever, right? And he just keeps getting shafted and knocked around, and, like, his story dictated by what's happening in, you know, the more popular or more important books at the time. And that guy is... Dick Grayson. Uh, I mean, he's, what, over 80 years old now. Uh, I guess we'll go into a bit of backstory, right? Dick Grayson, for those of you who don't know, which, I mean, everybody knows Dick Grayson, right? Uh, is He's the original Robin, right? He's the original sidekick to Batman Bruce Wayne. He's uh, the son of uh, the Flying Graysons, who were a... Uh, a uh, circus uh, acrobat team and they were in a circus that the mob was trying to take over somehow i don't know why a mob wants to control a circus or they want a protection money and the uh, you know the the circus wouldn't pay so they killed his parents right and then you know he's sad he's an orphan and batman's like oh hey i'm an orphan too you know why don't i take this guy in and you know teach him to fight crime like me because, you know, that's the only way for orphans to recover from having their parents murdered. Uh, and, I mean, I guess it works. Because then Batman has a sidekick. Right? Uh, who, uh, you know, who's... Uh, well, I mean, the purpose for his creation is pretty obvious, right? It's, you know, really two major reasons. The first one being that, one, Batman needs somebody to explain crap to. Right? You know, yeah, he needed his uh, Donatella Moss to, uh, you know, his Josh Lyman, right? Uh, he needed, you know, like the the dumb, you know, student to the teacher giving the exposition at the beginning of class in a movie or whatever. It's, you know, basically, you know, how'd you know that Joker was hidden in that room and not that room, Batman? Or how'd you know that the bomb was a fake? Or how'd you know this? Or... Blah, 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 that, right? You know, uh, you know they couldn't uh, always have Batman thinking out all his thoughts to the audience because that's, you know, not good writing. Well, it could be if it's done well, but, you know, if you're showing the character's thoughts, it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, pull the unreliable narrator trick and leave stuff out so you can have a surprise ending, right? It, it, I mean, you know, there's some annoying things uh, you know, that require, you know, it requires you to do, to do that. Uh, I'm thinking about, uh, the Dresden Files, right, which is all told in first-person perspective, narrated by Harry Dresden himself, right, and he's always leaving stuff out, right? You know, you say, oh, I stopped at this place to pick up a few things, right? And one of them is, you know, the, the MacGuffin he uses at the end to defeat the, you know, the Elf Lord or whatever it is, Right? But he can't just say that because then you'd know he's got something that'll guarantee him victory, you know, in his back pocket, right? So, you know, I mean, comics were full of it at the time and even years after of things, you know, Iron Man saying, oh man, that, uh, you know, Blash Bolt nearly did me in, but fortunately my armor's shield's held and now I can use my, you know, armor's... Uh, uh, heat induction plates to absorb the heat and, you know, use it to power our pulsar beam bolt. Uh, you know, targeted at its, you know, computer core, right? It's a lot of stuff, you know, even Thor with his, you know, whatever, his Norse 
God's speech where he's like, thou powers are not enough for mighty Thor. Thor will now use his magical hammer to blow all the oxygen out of the room so you suffocate and fall unconscious, right? Uh, I mean, you need, uh, you know, a good way to explain some stuff that's not, you know, easily drawable to the audience. And one of the best ways is to have, you know, uh, uh, an uninformed person to explain it to, right? Uh, you know, they're the audience proxy, right? So when he says, uh, you know, it's like when uh, Sherlock Holmes goes, elementary, my dear Watson, right? You know, Watson is us asking, how the hell did you figure that out, Sherlock? Right? Uh, and then, you know, he insults intelligence by saying, oh, it's so obvious, you dumbass. Uh, elementary. Uh, so, that's purpose one behind Dick Grayson. Purpose two is, well, the audience proxy, uh, but from the point of view of kids are reading the book, and, uh, you know, they might think Batman's cool and want to be him when they grow up, but, you know, Batman's in, in the super rich adult with adult problems. And uh, now they can have a kid, right? I mean, he's still got a backstory most of them don't have. I mean, most of them are not, you know, adopted by super rich people after their parents are murdered. But, you know, he, he likes comic books and video games and playing sports, right? He doesn't like doing his homework or cleaning his room doesn't like eating his vegetables, blah, 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 right? It gives uh, the young kids who were the main audience at the time, uh, you know, someone to glum on on and see themselves as or, you know, uh, to live more vicarious through. So, I mean, uh, that's the main reason, I think, for Robin's creation. Uh, also, it just gives Batman some of the play off of, right? Uh, you know, uh, they need to expand the universe, right? And sidekicks were in vogue, and uh, nowadays, especially, you know, it's another uh, another action figure to sell and whatnot. So, I mean, Dick Grayson, he was created way back in the day. Like I said, he's over eighty years old, right? Uh, I forget how long into Batman's run before he uh, popped in, but he's been in forever. He's He's done pretty much everything Batman has, right? He's been he's fought with Batman, uh, he's fought you know with the Justice League and Superman. There was uh, a ser uh, a title of books called uh, World's Finest, which was just Batman uh, and Superman team ups most of the time with Robin there, right? Same thing with Brave and the Bold; those were Batman team ups uh, with pretty much everybody but Superman, and Robin was along for the ride as well. So like he, you know, he's like I don't know how to explain, but he's he's the guy that knows every hero in the DC universe, and he likes them, and they like him, right? He and I guess I should, uh, you know, maybe stop and back up a bit before we get too far into that, uh, and we'll discuss, you know, him as we go through his history here. Uh, I'm kind of getting a bit ahead of myself, so. Uh, yeah, so, you know, Robin's created way back in the day. He's been with Batman a lot, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, then they start, uh, you know, farming them out, right? They wanted to make a, uh, a teen superhero book or a young kid superhero book, right? Uh, you know, it started off as, like, a, a one-shot, basically, because they said, well, we've got... Uh, who they had? They had... Robin, they had Kid Flash, Wally West, and they had uh, Gar, what's his face, uh, Aqualad, right? Uh, I'm not sure if Speedy was around yet. Uh, Speedy is Green Arrow's sidekick. But they had three, and they're like, you know what? We, we should make just uh, a kid's book. You know, pretty much everybody did. I mean, Archie had Archie Kids. There was Muppet Babies. There was, you know, Young Scooby-Doo. Eventually, you know, they, they liked to... Uh, to do younger versions of superhero things or whatever, right? So they decided to make basically a kid's Justice League kind of thing, right? Uh, and so uh, they, they wrote it, but it's like, well, we need a girl. Just, you know, the token female to balance things out. 
but they didn't, you know, Wonder Woman didn't really have a sidekick. But then someone's like, well, wasn't there that one issue where she, you know, there was like a kid Wonder Woman or something like that, right? Uh, you know, so, you know, they had, it was, it was kind of weird. It wasn't actually an issue about a kinder, kid Wonder Woman. There was, uh, it was like a, a time thing where it was Wonder Woman teaming up with a time displaced younger version of herself, which one doesn't make sense because I think uh, Wonder Woman was supposed to be originally, uh, you know, uh, uh, sculpted whole in the original story from, uh, you know, clay and given life by the gods. But uh, even if she wasn't, she wasn't Wonder Woman when she was 12 years old. You know, she was still uh, Diana, Princess of the Amazons, who never left her freaking island, right? Uh, so, yeah, basically, though, one guy is like, oh, I remember there's a cover of Wonder Woman, and she's standing in front of a mirror, and there's a younger version of herself in the mirror, and that's her sidekick, right? And it wasn't. So, I mean, that, that became Donna Troy, and she's had the weirdest sort of backstory. It's It's worth a read because, like, she exists, and then she doesn't, then she does, then she doesn't, right? And then, you know, uh, the multiverse gets collapsed into one universe, and uh, then she's caught in hypertime, and yeah, it, it's weird. But we're not here to talk about her. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, the Teen Titans in general. Uh, so they have the Teen Titans, and... Robin being around the longest and being the only one trained by Batman becomes the leader. Uh, he's also the only one without superpowers. So I guess it gave him something to do. Uh, you know, he could sort of hang back and give out orders and not seem as wimpy. You know, kind of like Batman does. Because, you know, as much as I love Batman and Nightwing and all the Robins, you know, it, it does stretch the belief sometimes when... You know, he can help Batman take out Darkseid somehow. As if, you know, Darkseid can't, you know, sneeze and just accidentally kill him. Right? You know, if Batman was in the same room with them when they started punching each other, he'd probably just die from the shockwaves alone. But anyway, I mean, you know, we we have to give a little to enjoy our stories. And so, uh, you know, they, they had uh, the Teen Titans and... Uh, you know, it, it, it did quite well from what I understand. Uh, went, uh, uh, you know, through a lot of changes, right? Uh, as they added more sidekicks and stuff like Speedy and uh, uh, who else? Uh, they started make, getting original characters like Starfire and Raven, who you probably know if you've ever seen the uh, cartoon. Uh, Beast Boy. No, we have Beast Boy's Gar and uh, Aqualata's Garth, maybe? I don't know. Maybe it's reversed. Uh, I don't really care about those two. They're kind of annoying characters. Uh, yeah, uh, Aqualad becomes Tempest at some point. You know, uh, Wally West uh, you know, goes through a bit of crisis, but then he graduates and becomes the Flash when the Flash dies in the original Crisis on Infinite Earths. What else is there? There's, you know... oh whole bunch of rosters they all change but one of the main constants is robin stays as the leader right even when you know his contemporaries get uh you know promoted to cover for their mentors from time to time robin's kind of stuck and that starts sort of sticking in uh people's craws because the character's getting older uh you know, eventually gets to the point where Robin's a uh, university student. He's at Gotham University or whoever. He's not even living in Wayne Manor most of the time, right? Uh, you know, uh, he's living in uh, university. He's splitting his time between school, Teen Titans, and helping Batman out. Uh, so they decide they need to make a break, you know. Because, I mean, he's, what, in his 20s? Like 19, 20, maybe 21, uh, and he still can't wear pants when he fights crime. <laughs> he's still got to wear those tights, right? Uh, you know, and uh, other characters have gotten some, you know, good character development. Uh, it even, well, I mean, Speedy, you know, they made him a, a drug addict uh, so they could have their anti-drug thing. Uh, 
you know, uh, but that's a whole other story. That it's quite the thing. It involves uh, essentially Stan Lee uh, breaking the power of the uh, comics uh, code of authority or whatever. Uh, well, not entirely breaking their power, but uh, you know, he 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 was he broke the first uh, chain, I guess. That's a good story. There's a good podcast. Uh, uh, I can't remember uh, where it's from, but maybe I'll try and find it. And you guys can listen to that. It's much better than whatever the hell this is. But anyway, uh, so I think it was, you know, uh, two of my favorites. Uh, Marv Wolfman and George Perez. Uh, you know, uh, Wolfman... He was the guy who did uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths and a whole whack load of uh, really, really good stories, right? Uh, you know what? Uh, if you'll excuse me for a second, I'm just going to uh, do a quick Google search. Uh, oh. Wolfman, not Wolf Mab. Or Wolfman. All right. So, uh, huh, good to know. All right, let's see some of the stuff he's done. Uh, yeah, so the new Teen Titans, which is what we're talking about now, Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, it, you know, the, it was uh, DC's first big uh, epic comic book uh, crossover event, All right, uh, you know, uh, what else? Uh, he's done some Marvel stuff. He created Bullseye and Daredevil. Uh, ooh, he created Nova. Uh, Nova's another character that, you know, sometimes I don't like him at all, and sometimes, like, uh, Annihilation Wave, mostly because Annihilation uh, Wave and the War of Kings and, like, that whole, what is that, like, three years, four years worth of comics, was really 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 good uh you know uh he was the first regular writer on spider woman uh he wrote spider-man or the amazing spider-man uh he had peter parker uh propose to mary jane and had her refuse him it's kind of funny uh uh the black cat felicia hardy he created well with hope with uh help um yeah uh so uh in this case we're at the point in time in uh robin's career uh he's teamed up with george perez who i mean is my favorite comic artist of all time i think and uh you know they sort of relaunched the teen titans in the 80s and uh uh you know they renamed beast boy and the changeling and uh they did some uh, good stuff uh, with uh, Deathstroke. Uh, I think uh, uh, this is uh, they uh, created uh, Jericho uh, and all of, like the whole Deathstroke family, which is just a messed up thing. Deathstroke has an interesting uh, uh, <laughs> history himself. Uh, well, I mean, it's comic books. Everybody's got an interesting history History if they've lasted it over 10 years, pretty much. Uh, but, I mean, Death, Deathstroke is, you know, bad. He's been, you know, a villain, a mercenary, you know, a anti-hero, a hero. You know, he's been neutral. He's uh, He's been an A-lister, a B-lister, a C-lister, a D-lister. He's... Uh, <laughs> You know, at one time he took out the entire Justice League pretty much by himself in uh, uh, Identity Crisis. Yeah, that, you know, people have problems with Identity Crisis. And that's one of them where he somehow, in the span of a minute, takes out the Flash, Green Lantern, uh, Green Arrow, Black Canary, and Zatara, I think. And maybe even Hawkman? They all jump him at once, and somehow he's able to take them all out. Uh, it, it's pretty wild. You know, it's a cool sequence, but it's kind of beyond, you know, uh, Deathstroke's skill set, even if he was prepared for it. But, uh, yeah. 
Anyway, I'm getting off track again. That's probably going to happen a lot. But anyway, so the point in time is they've got the new Teen Titans going. Uh, it's the 80s, and you know uh, they're really looking for a change, right? Uh, and Batman and Robin is kind of tired out because it's not you know Batman and his uh, you know his young sidekick. It's Batman and a 21 year old adult who's not allowed to wear pants at work. Uh, you know, uh, so they decide to do something about it. And so what they do is they have Batman fire Dick Grayson. Say, no, you can't have the suit anymore. F off. I'll pay for your school or whatever, and you can do whatever the hell you want, but you're not Robin anymore, so get the hell out of my Batcave. Uh, and so, you know, what the hell is uh, an ex Robin to do, right? He, uh, he sort of bops around. He goes back to the circus for a bit. You know, the Teen Titans are like, are you coming back to lead us? Because, you know, we need you. And he's like, well, I'm not sure what I am anymore without that costume. And then it takes Superman, of all people, to tell him a story about, you know, a, a superhero uh, tale or a legend. Probably, I guess it would be, you know, myth mythological legendary hero uh, tale from uh, Krypton that he somehow knows uh, about a hero named Nightwing. Uh, so... Dick Grayson's like, oh, you know what? I like that name. I'm going to steal it, Superman. And Superman's like, well, I was just telling you the story to, you know, to uh, give you encouragement. I wasn't telling you so you could steal my, you know, only remaining bit of culture from my home planet for your own use. You know, talk about cultural appropriation. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, Dick Grayson decides to become Nightwing. And he gets the most... 80s costume of all time. I mean, I love George Perez, but man. I mean, words... <laughs> words do not describe. <laughs> you, you, you gotta look it up. You know, maybe if I'm putting this on YouTube, uh, you know, this is where I would insert a picture. Uh, but it, it's got tassels. Okay? It's got tassels. Tassels... And, you know, I guess arm tassels or whatever, like, they, they, they hang down, like, it's a jumpsuit, I don't know, I mean, were they, I think they were trying to sort of homage his circus roots more, right? But, ugh, you know, his, his current one, you know, it, it, I mean, they took the basic, you know, sort of color schemes and all that, uh, for his, you know, current, uh, uh, you know, costumes, and it looks great now, but man, you know, oof, the original version was just bad. Yeah. I really liked a lot of his uh, later versions of his costume, even the ones, you know, where it was, you know, he was making his allegiance clear where he had the, you know, a bat symbol. It was, you know, just a black bodysuit with a big blue bat on it. Uh, you know, it was nice. I mean, it was still, you know, it was part of the Batman Inc. kind of deal, but uh, I like that one. And speaking of, uh, you know, they pretty much ripped off one of his suits and uh, turned it red for Cyclops' suit uh, for a while. But uh, I digress again. So anyway, uh, Night Tassel, uh, I mean, sorry, Tasseling, uh, sorry, Dick Grayson Nightwing now, uh, he basically just goes back to, to business, right? He's leading the Teen Titans, now as Nightwing. And, you know, he's kicking ass, taking names. This allows, you know, Batman to uh, collect another helpless waif off the streets. Uh, Jason Todd, you know, he sees his lovable little scamp stealing the tires off the Batmobile and says, You know what? That kid is the perfect Robin material. And it works out just as, ha as you would expect because everybody hated him and they killed him off. I think they had the Joker blow him up in a chemical factory. I actually have the, the comic, uh, the the trade paperback Death in the Family sitting on my table over there that uh, I've been meaning to read. Uh, I think they, they might have had like a, a reader vote in poll on whether or not to pull the trigger on him. Well, metaphor trigger. I think it was a detonator. But anyway, uh, yeah, people didn't like Jason Todd. You know, even, the, even having Nightwing come and... Uh, 
you know, uh, played the big brother role every once in a while, didn't help him. Because he was just kind of a douche. Uh, you know, they really liked uh, Tim Drake, though, which is why he stuck around so long. But, you know, that's another story. Uh, so, you know, Nightwing's finally able to go out on his own, right? And this is, you know, the 80s turn into the 90s, which turned 2000s, and they finally, you know, because, uh, you know, they've had, you know, Robin's side stories and, you know, Robin leading the Teen Titans and then Nightwing's side stories and Nightwing reading, then leading the Teen Titans. But uh, you know, he hasn't actually had his own series for that long, considering his lifespan, like a quarter of his lifespan, you know, he's had his own title. And uh, it, it's it's been hit or miss. It's been kind of goofy stuff. Uh, but the main problem, which is what I start off with, is every time his story starts getting good, he gets just shafted by whatever the hell else is going on in the DC universe. Right? Uh, like, for example, uh, let's start at the beginning. So, uh, Devin Grayson, I believe it was, had a really good run on uh, Nightwing uh, just before Infinite Crisis. Well, I say just before, but it was, I think it was like two years, maybe. It was a fairly long run uh, where, uh, you know, Nightwing was coming into his own. He, he, he basically settled in Bloodhaven uh, uh, with uh, spelled B-L-U-D Haven with, uh, I think, an umlaut over the U. Blood. Yeah, uh, he settles there, which is Gotham Light. It's like down the river from Gotham, and it's you know basically Gotham, but it's slightly poorer, and the villains you know are you know like uh, basically you know they're the guys that couldn't make it in Gotham proper, right? You know, uh, guys that you never really saw. Uh, for a long time, uh, like Blockbuster, right? Blockbuster, I think, is one of the biggest Nightwing nemesis, nemesi, nemesis, uh, uh, in uh, that run. Actually, yeah, it, it comes to a head. Uh, uh, I think, you know, the big turning point in his Bloodhaven arc is uh, his uh, climactic finale with uh, Blockbuster. Uh, yeah, well, hmm. yeah, maybe I should talk about why I like him a bit, uh, before we get too far in this, you know, we're what, half an hour in? Uh, like I said, I don't know when I really started liking, uh, Nightwing, but it was around this time, I think. Uh, cause, I mean, it's not like I didn't like him, cause everybody knew Dick Grayson, right? You know, I had seen the Adam West, uh, Batman show, and... I've seen, you know, was it Chris O'Donnell play him? You know, I, I used to love Batman uh, Forever as a kid. Uh, you know, Jim Carrey, you know, was the hottest thing around. And, you know, Batman was fighting him. Right? Uh, you know, that was you know, quite the movie. Uh, you know, it even had you know, one of the best songs of all time, Kiss from a Rose, uh, in it. You know, in uh, the VHS started with the Kiss from a Rose uh, Batman edition music video. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, you know, I was aware of Robin, and I, you know, I, I wasn't, as a kid, I wasn't the biggest comic book fan. It wasn't until I hit, you know, uh, my, you know, mid-teens-ish that I really started uh, soaking up the comics. But, uh yeah, it was really more, I was aware of him, I liked him, but he wasn't my favorite. And it wasn't until, I think, uh, I got hooked into, you know, some Teen Titans comics that I really liked. And uh, then Devin Grayson's run on uh, on uh, Nightwing. And also, oh, there was that uh, Justice League uh, versus Teen Titans Technus Imperative, uh, where... Uh, Basically, you know, it's the Teen Titans fighting the Justice League. I mean, that's exactly what it is. And so everyone's facing off against their opposite number because uh, they're fighting over Cyborg. And then, I mean, in typical hero fashion, you realize they were just pertaining to, to battle to the death 
to distract uh, Cyborg, who's become, you know, some sort of techno god. Uh, so they could extract him from the techno god machine or something. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it was there is like, whoa, man, you know, Nightwing's r- really a great character, right? You know, he's Batman, but without the brooding, right? You know, uh, you know, someone said he's the best thing Batman's ever done, which is probably true, right? Uh, you know, he took in a waif who had, you know, similar backstory to him. But, uh, you know, I guess thanks to having Alfred and uh, Bruce around, Bat, uh, you know, Dick Grayson never lost, you know, his, uh, you know, his joie de vie. He never lost his enthusiasm, right? You know, he's not all repressed pain and rage and whatever, right? You know, uh, like with Batman, you know, Bruce Wayne is the mask, right? And Batman is the character. Like, Batman is who he is, right? He just wears Bruce Wayne outside, you know, when he needs to hide his identity and to make business deals and shit, uh, you know, and and to get laid, I guess. Uh, Whereas, you know, uh, with Dick Grayson, well, partly because he's, you know, had a couple names, uh, over the years, I mean, he's even been Batman for a while. Uh, you know, Dick Grayson is the character, and you know, whatever mask he's wearing currently is the mask, right? He, you know, he's this uh, enthusiastic, fun-loving, kind leader, right? He's he's as dedicated as Batman, and he's as skilled as Batman because he was trained by Batman, and he's you know probably you know I'd say he's better suited. You know, like, he's a trained acrobat, you know. You think someone who's been physically training since they were two years old, even if it's not, like, straight-up martial arts, would have a better start than someone who didn't start until their parents were killed, you know, uh, at age 12. Right? Uh, you know, he, he, he's just a great character. And so I, I sort of started really liking him. And then... They decide uh, to have uh, Infinite Crisis. So, uh, you know, uh, Dick Grayson's uh, arc is getting pretty interesting. Uh, he, uh, he deals with Blockbuster. Well, he sort of beats Blockbuster, but realizes, you know, he's kind of screwed because he can't kill Blockbuster, even though he really wants to, right? Because, you know, they don't. And while he's having this sort of crisis of conscience... His, you know, sort of uh, teammate, femme fatale. I, I mean, I'm not sure he's his girlfriend at the time or whatever. Uh, but uh, uh, this girl named Tarantula, who's, I think, a, a cop who's wearing a costume. I don't know. I forget her backstory. But, uh, you know, she's you know, a vigilante, too. And she's a little less uh, against killing. So, you know, after Nightwing beats the crap out of Blockbuster and, you know, he's like, oh, I really want to kill you, but I can't. It's wrong. Kind of having that, you know, that emotional moment or whatever that Batman and him and all the Robins and he have done, right? They really want to kill somebody, but they can't because, you know, that's not the mission. You know, that's not what they swore to do. Uh, so while he's doing that, someone just walks up, you know, this tarantula lady and plants one in well, I think she empties a whole clip into in the blockbuster's chest. <laughs> and so, you know, Nightwing has a bit of a, you know, a bit of a breakdown. Actually, I think he has it right then and there. And while he's like you know, catatonic, uh this tarantula lady uh rapes him essentially cuz she's all turned on by it. He's like, "Oh, he beat Blockbuster." And she's all horny. And he's just like what the fuck? He's dead? Whatever. So she just sort of pushes him over and pulls down his pants. At least that's how I remember it. It was kind of really screwed up. Right? Uh, and it took uh, a while, a long time, for uh, Dick Grayson to sort of, uh, you know, come out of that. But the problem is, like I said, it, it kind of gets lost. Because what happens is, uh, as soon as that happens... Uh, Dick Grayson sort of gets absorbed into the big Batman event going on at the time, uh, uh, War Games, uh, in which uh, Robin number four, 
uh, sorry, former Robin number four, I guess at that point, uh, spoiler, I think Stephanie, I forget her name now, uh, the, it, it's kind of confusing, basically Tim Drake quits being Robin, Batman in a bit of jealousy, uh, I guess recruits Robin's girlfriend, who's, uh, I don't know, an erstwhile vigilante herself, named Spoiler, uh, uh, to be the new Robin, uh, and dumps her within, a, like, a month. You know, trains her, uh, and then dumps her because, uh, she wouldn't follow orders. Uh, and then somehow cons Tim Drake to being Robin again. Uh, but in between, uh, Spoiler, who's back to being Spoiler, uh, she like an idiot, tries to, you know, get back in Batman's good graces and prove herself to her by enacting one of Batman's, you know, Xavier Protocol, uh, freaking, uh, uh, you know, plans that were on his back computer. This one being something like, uh, it was, uh, get all the, the gang bosses in Gotham to meet up and, you know, declare, like, negotiate a truce or something. I forget, she was either trying to negotiate peace between them or get them all together so she could capture them all at once. Either way, it was kind of, you know, way out of her league. And it fails pretty miserably as, you know, one of them gets spooked and, you know, pulls a gun and suddenly all the heads of all the, you know, the major families, pretty much, uh, and groups that run Gotham City are dead, right, or injured and dying. Uh, so it starts a whole sort of, you know, just like a huge gang war explosion extraordinaire in uh, <laughs> in Gotham. Uh, I mean, it's a pretty good story itself because like, it's literally, it's just chaos, right? Because you've got gangs fighting within themselves, you know, killing each other to be the next boss. And then they're, you know, fighting each other to get revenge for the death of their boss uh and then there's other groups that are trying to take advantage of all this chaos i think black mask is one uh you know uh and everybody gets involved right spoiler catwoman tim drake uh nightwing and sort of tarantula follows him right and nightwing has a like a nervous breakdown in the middle of a fire and uh tim drake has to pull him out uh, because, you know, he, you know, he failed to save Blockbuster and then got sexually assaulted by this woman who's still hanging around him. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a whole thing, right? And so, uh, like, it, it's nice to see he's still dealing with the effects, but, you know, they don't really get to go and deal with Nightwing's trauma, right? Because eventually, you know, he sort of goes back and they sort of, running out of time so they sort of fast forward through it and have him do a bit of catharsis blah 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 and i think he brings tarantula in for the murder of blockbuster uh at this point also he's uh, a cop during the day i think uh because he's trying to he's uh he's got this new thing where he's trying to not be a vigilante right he's trying to do things within the system you can't see me doing air quotes but i'm doing air quotes so, you know, his, his lieutenant there is there, and uh, I guess she's the only one that knows he's Nightwing, or maybe it's his captain. Anyway, it, it's a whole thing, and he he sort of is, starts hitting to the other side. But then uh, there's uh, uh, Deathstroke comes in, and they do a, a whole series where, uh, you know, while he's still sort of, you know, trying to figure things out, Destro comes in and I guess Nightwing joins him for a while. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I forget, he calls himself like Renegade or Revenger or something. Uh, it doesn't last very long, but basically, uh, you know, all Nightwing does is he, he sort of gets some info on... Uh, Deathstroke almost gets the crap kicked out of him by Superman, and then he eps off 
along with Deathstroke's daughter Rose, uh, uh, who uh, you know, I guess uh, is also uh, uh, the babysitter of Speedy's. Uh, that's uh, Ray, or sorry, Roy Harper, I think. Uh, I think he's called Arsenal now, at this point, or maybe Red Arrow. One of the two. Uh, uh, the Green Arrow's former sidekick, former you know junkie, uh, who's raising his daughter with uh, uh, that he had with. Uh, what's her name now? Uh, uh, Cheshire. That's it. With Cheshire, who uh, is a terrorist who likes to poison people and is famous for blowing up, you know, a nuke in a uh, populated city. Uh, yeah, comic books are, are pretty much all over the place. But anyway, you know, when Rose is not, you know, doing work for Deathstroke, she's babysitting, uh, I think it's, uh, Lillian Harper, uh, Roy's daughter. Yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. Uh, so anyway, you know, Nightwing sort of convinces her to, to, to come to the light side. You know, they F off leaving Deathstroke to do whatever, right? Uh... And, uh, yeah, basically, uh, Nightwing puts her up with, uh, the same place where he's keeping, uh, this daughter of a, a mafia boss who's, you know, uh, you know, the, the mafia boss was killed or whatever. And, uh, so he, he, you know, took the daughter who's an innocent and all this is, you know, like a 16 year old girl and, uh, you know, just took her out and put her somewhere safe so she'd have a normal life. So he puts those two together. Then he gets the idea uh, that in Bloodhaven he's going to try something different. And this is where he gets a little dumb. Uh, basically, he, he tries to, to create a no, no costume character zone in Bloodhaven. But basically, Bloodhaven is going to be no heroes, no villains, no capes. Right? No capes, no bodysuits, no giant robots or whatever. Uh, and so he, he was going to keep the peace, but he was going to do it as a cop, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, the he was sort of forming, you know, he used this uh, mafia boss daughter, basically had her go and take control of her old family somehow. Uh, I don't know why they listened to a 16-year-old girl. And then he talked to, uh, you know, his police captain, and basically, I think you know, they, they were going to turn it into a no superpowered person thing. You know, basically, they solve their their uh, problems through, you know, uh, fists and guns instead of lasers and, you know, eye beams and shit. Uh, there, sorry, I, uh, I was going to blow my nose and realize you know, I wasn't going to do that right into the mic, so I had to pause there. So, yeah, Nightwing uh, tries this weird grand scheme, and maybe it's working, maybe it's not, but we never find out, because uh, as a prelude to uh, Infinite Crisis, uh, Deathstroke, I guess he's a little, still a little miffed at Nightwing uh, for, you know, stealing his daughter, uh, and because he needs to, you know, uh, he's part of some sort of secret society. Right, led by Lex Luthor, who's actually not Lex Luthor. He's Alexander Luthor from uh, Earth Three or whoever. Uh, and that's a whole thing. We could talk about you know <laughs> uh, the 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 Lex is Luthor forever, right? I mean, you know, at this point, you know, I think the current Lex Luthor is uh, you know in a different body, uh, and maybe he's got a robot hand. He, Lex Luthor's been through a lot. Right. Uh, at one point, he he was pretending to be his own son because uh, he had to, you know, he transfer his brain to a clone body. It's his comic books. What do you say? Uh, but anyway, uh, Lex Luthor. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, Lex Luthor or Alexander Luthor has created a secret society because he's got schemes uh, that involve a crisis. Blah blah blah, and uh, they need to, you know, create some chaos. Uh, so Deathstroke's like, you know what, I'm going to drop chemo. It was essentially, uh, you know, uh, 
I guess he's the anti-Captain Planet, I guess you could say. Right? He's just noxious chemicals and pollution and uh, a giant blobby mess, right? Uh, and he gets dropped on Bloodhaven, right? And, you know, Bloodhaven's Nightwing City, but, you know, it takes Superman to clean it up. It's actually, you know, in a whole Superman book about how Superman has to go in and basically, you know, uh, since chemo is like living chemicals, he has to fight chemo and beat the crap out of him. So chemo keeps absorbing all the toxins in the air to grow big enough uh, that he can, you know, challenge Superman and then Superman just sort of throws him to the sun or something. I don't know. But, uh, you know, Nightwing, you know, he finally gets the end of his whole, like, trauma arc at there because, you know, he, he's just basically running around Bloodhaven that's, you know, a toxic mess, uh, going in and out and dragging as many people as he can out of the city until he finally succumbs and Batman has to pull him out. And, you know, it, it's quick because, you know, that it's literally the last, uh, I think, the last Nightwing comic uh, before uh, Infinite Crisis sort of uh, puts, uh, you know, it, uh, it caps everything and ended everybody's story, right? Uh, you know, everybody's, you know, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman on down. Uh, so uh, it's the last story. And so basically, you know, they get... Like a few panels where Batman's like blah blah blah, uh, you know. Uh, what's he say? I'm trying to think now. He says, "Oh, he's, he's talking about Blockbuster," and he's like, you know, he says to Nightwing, he says, "Dick, uh, you lost sight of Blockbuster's life, and I can forgive you for that. But uh, then you lost sight of your own life, and for that, I can't forgive you." And that's supposed to be, you know, his sort of, you know, I guess come to Jesus moment where it's like, you know, he gets he gets absolution from his mentor, right? Uh, pretty much the only one who could understand what he was in, the situation he was in. And that's it, you know, it's like, you know, Batman in his backhanded way shows his love for Dick and also sort of says, you know, it's okay. I mean, it doesn't really, you know, help him deal with the trauma of being sexually assaulted. But, uh, you know, uh, they just sort of ignore that. And then I think there's a little capper at the end, which shows uh, Nightwing just before he's about to go off and do his thing in the events of uh, Infinite Crisis. Uh, he's, like, getting on a plane or something. And he's talking to Barbara Gordon, who's, you know, uh, waiting outside. And he's like, I'm going to propose to you as soon as I'm back, baby. Here's the ring. Uh, and that just sort of never materializes uh because yeah so barbara gordon's been pretty much the main love interest like there's this tarantula thing but i mean she's a rapist and in jail at some point uh starfire who he hooked up with through his pretty much his entire teen titans time with her i you know i they just sort of uh noped her out of the picture uh so basically you know every once in a while he'll commute to uh to gotham or he'll uh He'll take along on a Birds of Prey mission or whatever, and he'll spend the night with Babs. I think uh, Black Canary was visiting uh, Oracle, as uh, Barbara Gordon was known at the time. Uh, I still, I miss Oracle. I mean, you know, it's the whole reason I'm not watching the Birds of Prey movie. Why do you have Birds of Prey without Oracle, right? I mean, I'm not even sure they have Batgirl in there. I haven't seen it, so how would I know? Uh, but anyway, you know, like Black Canary, I think walks in on uh dick grayson in the shower uh he has like a great line where he's like he's got one hand covering his crotch and the other hand you know covering uh the top of his face and it's like oh geez black canary he almost found out two of my secrets <laughs> the second one being you know his uh, tiny penis i assume or maybe it's large you know though you gotta wonder why he's always carrying those big night sticks around right uh, anywho, uh, so yeah, that's where we are with Nightwing. You know, Batman grants him absolution, and he's, you know, finally gonna, uh, put a ring on, uh, Barbara Gordon's finger, right? And then it all gets blown away, you know, his whole, like, Bloodhaven project, all of that just gets blown out the door by Infinite Crisis. 
Uh, he does get, at least he gets some good time in Infinite Crisis. They were actually going to kill him in Infinite Crisis. But whoever like was the editor says, you can't kill him. Even my mom knows who Dick Grayson is. You can't kill Dick Grayson. All right? So they chose uh, uh, Connor Kent, Superboy, uh, instead. Who's actually, you know, the son of Superman and Lex Luthor. Those two finally got together. But anyway... You know, Infinite Crisis comes and Batman realizes that people don't freaking trust him anymore because he didn't trust them and built a satellite monitoring array to monitor all metahumans that got hacked and was basically turning people into one-man army robots to hunt them all down. So they're a little miffed at Batman. So, you know, Batman's like, Dick, you're the only one they'll listen to. Because, you know, they're not listening, you know, they've lost faith in Superman and Wonder Woman at the time, too. Uh, all because, you know, there's uh, stuff that happened in Identity Crisis. There's stuff that happened when uh, Wonder Woman killed Maxwell Lord. Uh, you know, they've been sort of trying to lay that foundation for years. I'm not sure how well it really worked out in the end. But, you know, we got Identity Crisis. And, uh... No, sorry, we got Identity Crisis leading into Infinite, Infinite Crisis. And basically, the climax is, you know, Alexander Luther has built this, you know, machine to remake the universe. And he's using it to remake the universe, right? Uh, he's, you know, got it powered by all these people who were uh, originally from other universes who are now part of this one. Uh, and uh, it's like this big tower in the North Pole or the South Pole, I can't remember. And so Nightwing and, and Superboy go, and for some reason they think, all right, we can take them. I guess they figure there's really nothing else they can do. They say, all right, because, you know, the whole world's in chaos at this point, which is, you know, the villain's plan, right? You know, they're breaking villains out of jails, they're bombing cities, and it's just robbing everything anything to do to keep people distracted from what's already going on and so nightwing you know he calls in troops and says all right guys anyone who can you know be spared right the real threat is here come help us because it's just me and superboy alone against superboy prime who's you know stronger than i think superman at this point uh don't ask me that's superboy prime as a whole you know, he's, uh, I think, a good story idea that never materialized, and he turned into a, a real asshole. But, uh, you know, uh, it all uh, it all comes to a head as they assault this thing, and, you know, sort of Dick Grayson gets to be the guy that'll lead the final charge. Uh, and then, you know, when sort of reality reverts back to normal, he's there sort of uh, leading the charge again uh, when... I guess all the villains recongregate and attack Gotham for some reason. I guess just because, you know, they hate Batman. And uh, Deathstroke uh, shoots Nightwing uh, and almost kills him. I'm not sure if that's where he was supposed to die or if he was supposed to die where, uh, you know, uh, Superboy died uh, destroying the tower. But, uh, yeah... And it, uh, you know, basically everything comes to an end. And then they do, uh, everybody gets jumped ahead a year after Infinite Crisis. It was actually a really good, uh, neat idea. Basically what they did was they, uh, you know, they end Infinite Crisis. They show Superman, uh, Wonder Woman, and Batman taking a year off from superheroing. Uh, and, uh, you know, Batman goes off with uh, Tim and Dick uh, and Alfred. Uh, on like a cruise or something, I don't know. Superman you know, he just uh, goes off to spend time with his wife, I guess. And Wonder Woman does whatever she does. Uh, so they just sort of time jump one year in the future. And then they had this awesome series called 52 that was released uh, one issue every week that uh, filled in the gaps of what happened to the world during the year without, you know, Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman around. Right? Uh yeah, you know, it, it it was pretty good, and it it created the the fifty two verse, as I call it, where you know it's a multiverse, but there's only fifty two universes, uh, because that was the name of the the series it was in, 
right? And there's also things like, you know, when Black Adam gets supercharged, you know, how the hell are they going to stop him, right? You know, he's normally a Captain uh, Marvel thing of problem, but, you know, uh, this time he's even more powerful than them. And Captain Marvel's got his own problems because the Spectre had killed Shazam and destroyed the Rock of Eternity, and Captain Marvel had reassembled the Rock of Eternity and was inside it because apparently he's the only thing holding magic together. It's it's a thing. Uh yeah, it, it it's pretty wild. Like the whole like Spectre going crazy again somehow, even though like the last time he did it's because uh he picked Hal Jordan as a host and Hal Jordan had parallax inside, which was, you know, a a, a giant fear monster. Uh like the the universal embodiment of fear. It's yeah. It's comic books. What can you say, right? I mean, it just gets weirder because it's, you know, the Adam's ex-wife who killed uh, the elongated man's wife. Uh, so the Adam would, uh, you know, have sex with her. Uh, became Eclipso, which is some sort of shadow magic demon that convinced the Spectre to kill Shazam for reasons. And that destroyed all magic. And also... The Blue Beetle Scarab that, you know, the current Blue Beetle who was killed by Maxwell Lord to start this whole thing, uh, never really used, was found by a little kid, but now it's not magic anymore, it's super science, and it's basically a super awesome Blue Beetle super suit that talks to him and maybe wants to destroy the world. We're getting off track again. Uh, so anyway, Nightwing's... You know, whole storyline has just been kiboshed, uh, right? But the only good thing, or the only fair thing, is that pretty much everybody's story has just been kiboshed, right? So it's, uh, you know, it's not just him this time, right? But yeah, just nothing ever developed, right? Because they just forget all the stuff that happened in Bloodhaven. Uh, the, they wrote one short little story that basically, you know, shows them recuperating from being shot by Deathstroke. Where, you know, uh, uh, Barbara talks him out of proposing or talks him out of marrying her or rescinding his proposal. It's dumb. I mean, it's, you know, a nice moment between them. But, you know, it's just really explaining why they're not married after he promised to marry her. Right? Uh, Yeah. But then Nightwing gets, you know, he, he starts rebuilding. He moves to New York now. Uh, which is, I guess, New York and Gotham are just across the river from each other. And Bloodhaven's downriver from them. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know how that really works. But anyway, he moves to New York. Uh, basically, Wayne Enterprises owns a museum there that's made out of an old castle. And Nightwing becomes the curator there because he wants to use the old castle as his new night base. It's not what it's called, but uh, it's good as name as any. Like, they even have, like, the, this... They spend half an issue to him putting it all together, right? How he, you know, gets put in charge and shows off he's an awesome curator who's just not going to be around too much. Uh, and he calls in the Green Lantern, John Stewart, who, when he's not Green Lanterning, is an architect to design and use his Green Lantern powers to help build inside you know he gets oracle to help him with the tech and you know cyborg to help him with the defenses and all that right uh and they build this whole thing he builds uh he calls it the night winger which is like some sort of hang glider powered hang glider uh you know and he uses that to zip around the city real quick and he sort of settles into a thing he, he gets uh uh a whole line of uh you know his own rogues gallery uh he starts building it up again and you know he he's got some batman crossovers there's a main one where uh talia al ghul is uh collecting dead uh metahuman bodies uh you know to basically try and ex you know, extract the dna and either clone them or extract their powers and put them in other people uh and so basically he you know, after he stops that, he creates a, 
you know, uh, basically has the Justice League create a um, superhero, supervillain mortuary. So anybody who's dead goes in this, you know, this morgue uh, on the, in the Hall of Justice. Uh, so they're protected from uh, corpse seas. Uh, and, you know, he's got some good stories coming. And it's really starting to heat up. And then Batman dies. Well, Final Crisis happens, which means, you know, Countdown happens and Countdown, uh, they, they tried to, to remake 52, but without the, you know, the pre-planning, the, uh, the well thought out overarching storyline and, you know, good editing, <laughs> uh, that 52 had and it just bombed. Uh, all it really did was, uh, blow up a few universes uh, bring back the Adam who left after his wife, his ex-wife killed, you know, Sue Dibney and, uh, Tim Drake's dad. Uh, oh, and it brought back, uh, Jason Todd as the Red Hood. Uh, Jason Todd, uh, you know, uh, Robin number two, who was killed by a Joker, had come back a while back, uh, as the Red Hood. Uh, the Red Hood, for those of you who don't know, was in, uh, older, uh, you know, older continuity, the Red Hood was the Joker before he was Joker. Uh, at one point, they made a backstory for the Joker. And uh, it was, you know, basically he was this nerdy guy who uh, was, I guess, leading a group of criminals to rob a chemicals plant. Uh, I think he might have been forced to because, you know, mobsters, I don't know. But he fell into a vat of, you know, chemicals and became the Joker. Right, so Jason Todd comes back because, well, because the Infinite Crisis basically is. Oh, uh, I don't even know how to explain it, but uh, Superboy Prime, Alexander Luther, uh, and Golden Age Superman and Golden Age Lois Lane were sort of stuck in a, you know, a bubble in the center of the multiverse that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and they were the reason why, uh, you know, uh, the DC uh, universe held together after Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's, I don't know. It's kind of dumb. But basically, they were sort of trapped in there and uh, they couldn't get out. Uh, so they had to force their way out. You know, Superman and Superboy basically had to punch their way out. Uh, sorry, Superboy Prime. You got to keep those separate because Superboy Prime uh, is. A young Superman, like a young Clark Kent, who's you know who's Superboy, like he was you know in the old continuity, but from Earth Prime, which I think is our Earth. I'm not too sure about that. Uh, whereas Superboy, like the current Superboy and the Superboy at the time, was a clone of Superman with Lex Luthor DNA in him. Uh, but anyway, when they were punching this wall to get back into reality every time they punched the reality wall it would change reality a little bit uh and i'm not sure if they did that you know they decided to do that at the time or they were just using it as a way to sort of retcon things in so one of them one of the punches uh brought jason todd back to life except he woke up in his coffin <laughs> Uh, where he had been buried for years. <laughs> Except, you know, he wasn't like a zombie or anything. He was like fully fleshed. So he like, he, he busts himself out of his coffin, uh, and, you know, escapes or whatever. Uh, and is found by Talia al Ghul, of all people, somehow. Uh, who, you know, hides him while he recovers and basically helps him become the Red Hood just to, to screw with Batman. Uh, it's you know i guess an okay story uh and it brought jason todd back which whatever he's still a douche but uh you know if you like anti-heroes i guess you got jason todd uh anywho uh so yeah countdown led to final crisis which oh i mean final crisis yeah it it went nowhere and everywhere uh, it's the only major, uh, you know, event 
that you really need to read every single tie-in to have a hope of understanding what the hell is going on. Uh, because it like it's just so crazy, you know, like the new gods and the uh, you know uh, of Apocalypse and New Genesis were all killed pretty much. Like it, it starts with Orion being killed by a bullet traveling through time, uh, and being chased by you know, Barry Allen and Wally West of all people, Barry Allen who's been dead for forty years, well thirty uh, or maybe twenty five, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, the original Flash, uh, he comes back at the end of this anyway, but, uh, or maybe comes back at the end of, uh, um, uh, Blackest Night. I guess it really doesn't matter, but, uh, no, Blackest Night is afterwards. Anywho, uh, I'm <laughs> getting off topic here. Uh, so yeah, it's just weird. Uh, so all the, all the new gods are dead and they're being reborn on earth, uh, for reasons that really don't make sense. Uh, like everything on countdown that happens doesn't really matter because everything that happens just sort of undoes itself by the end of the countdown anyway. And then they just sort of forget it. Uh, you know, all he really knows that dark side gets killed by Orion really. Uh, and uh, then, you know, Orion gets killed and he's the last of the new gods. Like, there's a, there was a time book called Death and New Gods where somebody was going around killing them. I think it was Mr. Miracle, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's all kind of dumb. And, yeah, so they, you know, they get reborn into human forms. And they try and create apocalypse on Earth. And they take a brain wipe the entire population using the anti-life equation, which I'm not sure why that works. I thought it was just going to wipe out all life, but whatever. And, you know, Batman gets captured and experimented on, and then he shoots Darkseid with a bullet that will eventually kill him, but not right away. And Darkseid zaps Batman with his eye beams that kill him. And then all of reality gets eaten up as apparently a psychic vampire, that was either inside dark side or takes control of dark side it's just gobbling up all of reality and superman looks at a miracle machine from the future and builds it that plays a trumpet song that calls you know heroes from all the other uh multiverses or whoever to come help and save the day and they restart reality uh again for like the 20 millionth time and but all you really know is batman dies batman dies so naturally they need a new batman and they're not going to screw people over by having some asshole like Azrael be the new batman right after you know bane broke the bat you know people were pissed that they didn't pick dick grayson to be the new batman they said when you know they picked some dude that batman went met like once in france while on vacation to be the new batman it's a, uh, uh, yeah, don't, I, it's the dark days of Batman. But, uh, yeah, I mean, even Alfred quit when he saw how much of an asshole Batman was being. Uh, like, for the 50th time. I think Alfred's dead currently, but, uh, yeah, so Batman's dead, and they, uh, you know, they have to stop everything. Uh, to have the battle for the cowl, as it's called. And everybody gets in on it. You know, uh, obviously, there's uh, Jason Todd uh, and Tim Drake get in on it. Uh, you know, a bunch of Batman villains, like Two-Face, who was actually, I think, a good guy at the time. Because uh, he got plastic surgery to fix his face, and he became a lawyer again, but that wasn't enough. So he, you know, started going out streets with a baseball bat, beating up muggers. And then Batman's like, you know what? You might be one of my, you know, greatest villains. I think he almost beat Robin the Dead to death with a baseball bat once. But I'm going to train you to fight crime. Uh, yeah. I mean, and sure enough, he goes crazy again. But whatever. Uh, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's comic books. What do you expect? Uh, so, yeah, where are we here? Uh, oh yeah, so the battle for the cow. Even the Secret Six 
uh, you know, go and play. Like, it's, uh, you know, Catman and Bane in Deadshot have all tangled with Batman before. So they they, they spend, uh, there's an issue, a tie-in issue. And, I mean, I love Gail Simone. She writes them in. And I guess, you know, uh, they're all in there. And they're like, well, we're not trying to replace the Bat. But they start, you know, helping people. You know, they, they stop a kidnapping. And they kill the kidnappers. Uh, and they're like, yeah, we're not trying to replace the bat. And I don't know if they're trying to, you know, work through their feelings that their greatest nemesis and the guy they, the only one guy they all fear being gone or not. Uh, uh, you know, being, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. And then Ragdoll's dressed like Robin and, uh, Deadshot has one of my favorite Deadshot stories because he goes talk to this, uh, uh, minister he used to be like a prison chaplain when he was in uh, uh, Blackgate Penitentiary or whoever, and because he's you know he's feeling out of control, uh, and he doesn't know why. And you know he just, after talking he realizes oh it's because Batman's dead and you know uh, you know it kind of reminds him you know of whatever, right? Uh, it's actually a really good Deadshot story, but anyway you know. They have, you know, a bit of a, a crisis in Gotham because people know Batman's dead. And uh, they, uh, they uh, you know, uh, the villains are trying to take advantage of it. And the heroes are mucking things up and they're fighting over who gets to be Batman, essentially. Uh, and Nightwing doesn't want it. You know, he's driving around the Batmobile and he, he's just using, you know, the Batmobile's uh, weaponry to to stop crimes and save people without getting out because you know he doesn't want to show that it's nightwing in the thing or whatever so he's just drive by crime fighting uh and he you know he's got his own issues to work out because you know well partly they use the fact that he wasn't picked to be batman last time batman was deep batmanified as you know uh, a bit of a, a mental issue for him like he doesn't feel worthy right uh, but in the end, he decides to be Batman for a while. And so, obviously, you can't have a Nightwing series when he's busy being Batman, right? Uh, so, you know, they stop Nightwing altogether, essentially. And so now they're Batmaning it up, and you get some really good Batman and Robin stories, because uh, the, the Damian Wayne, Batman's uh, son with Talia al Ghul, uh, uh, Robin to Dick Grayson Batman was probably one of the best, uh, you know, like uh, superhero sidekick uh, stories I've read in a long time. You know, just the way they were written, the way they played off each other, right? Uh, you know, the way they both dealt with the death of their father figure, right? Uh, you know, it was it was just really really good. You know, but it was just too short. Like, finally, it was Nightwing's time to shine, right? To step forward and take on the mantle of Batman. And he gets, like, two weeks of the job before Batman comes back. And, you know, he doesn't do much in the Justice League, right? I think he did more as a Justice League member the brief time when he was, like, the Justice League B team. When uh, Batman and, you know, the main Justice League crew... Uh, were sucked into the past, uh, into, you know, Atlantis during, you know, the 1500 BC, uh, Batman left a, you know, basically a emergency, you know, team summoning program that would cobble together a new Justice League. Cause it, you know, this was during the point where there was only seven members, right? It was, it wasn't the huge Justice League Unlimited team where there was like 50, you know, plus members and another you know hundred reserve members right you know it was it was only the seven essentially so batman you know had his backup team and the leader of that was dick grayson and so for you know i think three issues he was the leader of the justice league and i think he did more in those three issues than the whole year or so he was batman in terms of you know fighting with the justice league uh which is kind of disappointing. Like, you know, this was his time, right? I mean, I guess, you know, he say he's already proved himself as his own character, but, you know, this was him taking on the mantle. And they really didn't give him enough time to really 
for us to really savor it, I guess. We did get some great stories, though, especially the Batman and Robin stuff, like I said. But, of course, Batman wasn't really dead. Apparently, you know, Darkseid's eye beams is what they call them, his Omega beams, which before would just, you know, disintegrate people out of existence. This time, apparently, sent Batman back to, you know, beginning of, t of life on Earth, you know, caveman times, essentially. Sorry, I get, those aren't the same thing. I mean, they're billions of years off, really. But, you know, the beginning of human life on Earth, I guess the proper way to say that, uh, where uh, Anthro, the, you know, one of DC's comic book characters, lives. And then he time hops his way back to his time and then past his time, I think. And apparently when he gets back to his proper timeline, uh, he's going to explode with time energy and destroy the universe. As like Darkseid's last laugh or something. I don't know. It was kind of dumb. Uh, it wasn't good. But, you know, uh, you've got Batman back. So Nightwing's got to go back to being Nightwing. Right? Uh, and they gave it a try. You know, again, it's another, another rebuilding his life <laughs> series. And they start from scratch. This time he's in Gotham. And, uh... I think he he uses his money uh, because I guess he had some money that his parents left him or he got some money from their insurance that he never knew he had, but Lucius Fox invested it for him. And because, you know, he, he was being invested by, like, you know, the DC Universe's greatest financial advisor, it was worth a pretty penny, you know, a few million dollars by the time he gets a hold of it. And so he... Now he's a millionaire in his own right, and he strikes off on his own. And uh, he wants to do things his own way, and not under Batman's shadow, even though he's in Gotham. Uh, it's, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of wacky. Uh, but basically he buys the circus his parents used to, and him used to be in, uh, and basically tries to make it a permanent circus that exists in gotham it doesn't it's not a traveling circus thing. it's it's yeah whatever i mean you know it's a way for him to reconnect with his roots which works uh you know meet old friends and then it's a way for them to loop in this whole uh uh court of owls storyline which uh was the main batman story so like his whole storyline basically gets hijacked again by the court of owls uh, based on the Court of Owls is this secret society in Gotham that's been sort of running Gotham from the darkness by basically killing everybody who wouldn't, you know, run things their way. You know, it's implied that they might have had something to do with uh, the death of Thomas and Martha Wayne, blah, 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 blah. And they basically, you know, see Batman as a threat to that. And it turns out that uh, Dick Grayson's ancestor was the original enforcer for the Court of Owls. And he's somehow still alive due to Court of Owl magic or science or something. It's, it's you know, there's like a, a pool of water and some weird metal or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, basically for a long time, the Graysons, uh, you know, uh, apparently they got their name because they were the, the gray sun. They lived halfway between the light and the dark. Uh were uh the you know the enforcers for the court of owls and the reason they were traveling the circus is they were using the circus as a front to uh you know one recruit circus people to be assassins i guess and two just to hide their activities but then somehow forgot it all for generations uh and never told you know dick grayson or his parents i don't know but anyway, it's a whole thing where Batman and Nightwing have to confront the Court of Owls and Nightwing has to defeat his great-grandpa in battle. Or maybe his great-great-great-grandpa, I don't know. Uh, who's, you know, uh, unkillable. It's a it's a thing that happened. But when it, you know, it, when it all shakes out, then there's the... Uh, well, like, I forget what they call it now. Like the... It was like the Joker family run where basically the Joker gets involved and he kidnaps the entire Bat family 
and tortures them all or something. It, it, I think it's called Death of the Family. And it was supposed to be, you know, basically the shattering of the Bat Family as it had grown too big, right? So, uh, you know, it was, uh, yeah, basically, you know, the Joker screwed up everything for everybody, really, right? And they all sort of, you know, get pissed and go off their own ways, uh, right? And I think Nightwing goes to Chicago, and now he's broke because he poured all his money into the circus, and the Joker blew it all up, and he didn't have insurance, I guess. I don't know. But uh, so now <laughs> he's rebuilding his life again in Chicago and acquiring a new cast of characters, you know, uh, like roommates and stuff and people he has to hide his uh his identity from and people who are trying to help him and you know he wants to go his own way and do his own thing and become chicago's superhero and they just start building that up and you know what happens another big dc event uh yeah i think it was the the prelude to the year of the villain or whoever uh so man this is so there are multiverses, right? You know, so there's, you know, like the main universe, uh, which we're talking about now. Then there's like the Golden Age universe. And they call that Earth 2, you know, where Superman, you know, talks by Jove and I'll get you, Chinaman. You know, the casual racism and the uh, and the misogyny and just the, you know, everyone goes home happy in the end and no one dies. Right. Uh, you know, I uh, and weird stuff happens all the time. That's Earth 2, right? Earth 3, where Alexander Luther's from, uh, is also apparently Earth... No, I think now it's known as Earth Minus uh, 1, because, uh, yeah, Alexander Luther's son of Lex Luthor, who was a good guy in that universe, the one hero standing against the crime syndicate, who was... Uh, you may have seen them. They're evil versions of the Justice League, uh, but they're not, like... You know, it's not the same people for the most part. Like, some of them are, but some of them aren't. It's kind of complicated. Uh, and so, uh, uh, you've got the crime syndicate, then in this prelude to your villain, they hop over to, you know, the main Earth. Uh, and the first thing they do is beat the shit out of, then kidnap then torture Dick Grayson, then reveal uh, his identity to the world, then plant a bomb in his chest that will blow up uh, unless he dies, and then he dies. So it won't blow up. Uh, and that's just how it starts, essentially. Uh, so, yeah, basically Dick Grayson gets screwed over again because now he's out into the whole world, right? Right? And he, uh, and he's killed. Uh, I forget how they solved it. I think it's Lex Luthor else in the end. Uh, I should point out that this, you know, things have sort of been rebooted now. So, like, Lex Luthor builds his first Bizarro clone at this point and stuff. It's, it's a whole thing. It's not necessarily a good thing, but it's a thing. Uh, so, like, it's still, like, you know, we're... We're in earlier days for most of these superheroes, right? They're not like, you know, 20 years in. They're, you know, 10 years in or some, or maybe five years. I don't know. But uh, so there's a lot of sort of retelling of origins and stuff too. Or first, new first appearances by some people. But anyway, so Nightwing's outed and dead. So Nightwing series disappears. Except, you know, I mean, obviously people don't stay dead for long so in this case you know he you know he was revived as soon as he was killed like like basically i think lex luther kills him to stop the bomb and then yanks the bomb out and then restarts his heart for reasons um and uh saves the day because you know basically what happens is the year of the villain right so lex luther you know saves the day uh you know when the justice league can't and then you know this is uh the prelude to basically the villains sort of taking over for all the heroes for a bit. It's yeah. I didn't really read too much of that, but, uh, I did read Grayson, which was then uh, what replaced Nightwing because now that he's not, you know, 
uh, Nightwing anymore and he's dead, Batman thinks, you know what? It's perfect for you to be a secret agent. <coughs> you know, uh, outside of when he was leading the Outsiders in like the early 2000s. And it was like a covert operations group, Nightwing was. And then, you know, he handed it off to Batman because he didn't want to do it anymore. Uh, or whatever. Uh, or it was getting too dark from it. But anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, Grayson. Basically, he's just Dick Grayson. He's not even wearing a mask. Uh, and he just, I guess he's going around screwing up shit for, you know, terrorists and stuff. Uh, uh, but basically, the whole point is he's just sort of getting out there and he's hoping, you know, his and Batman's plan is that he'll be noticed by Spiral, who's either a person or an organization. We're not sure at the time. Uh, that's been, you know, it's got some weird designs, right? They seem to be, you know, stopping some terrorists and helping others, whatever. So they need, uh, Dick Grayson to go undercover to figure out what's the what and how to stop them. And so, yeah, they spend a whole year of him Graysoning around as Grayson. Uh, you know, he, he gets recruited by, uh, Spiral and goes on missions with, uh, you know, his hot boss lady he uh hides out in a finishing school for girls which is actually a finishing school for daughters of like dictators and super villains and rich evil people because they're all taught like martial arts and shit uh and how to kill people uh yeah there's a whole thing where he you know he's basically he's just sort of you know he's they, they just got him in, like, a house on the lot in the back where when some of the girls find out he's there and they, they peer at him. So he has fun, you know, uh, leading them a merry chase around. Uh, uh, and because he's exposed and uh, he has to become a gym teacher for them, it's kind of dumb. And, you know, uh, his hot boss is jealous of him getting all the attention from these, you know, young preteen girls, which I admit is pretty creepy. Uh so uh she has them pretend to be gay it's yeah it's kind of like three's company batman edition i guess and it doesn't last long because he figures out you know this spirals plan and whatever yeah it's kind of a thing like they call him spiral because they've got this weird face mask that when you put it on uh makes anybody who looks at you see your face it's just a spiral yeah it it doesn't last it's an okay sort of you know it's more of a you know a spy thriller book than a superhero book at that point but it's dick grayson so you like it and you read it and you know they resolve it and they move on uh so then he sort of goes back to being nightwing and then oh man uh this is where i stopped reading for a bit because it got kind of weird basically Another dude shows up who I think he calls himself Kestrel and he sort of wants to, to be the new Batman to, to Dick Grayson's Robin or Nightwing. Uh, and, you know, so Batman sends him in to deal with Kestrel because he knows he's part of some sort of conspiracy and, you know, a uh, rift starts forming between Batman and Dick and, uh, you know, I think it turns out it was the Court of Owls again probably and like I said, I didn't read too much of it. It's kind of dumb. Uh, you know, and it just sort of gets put the kibosh on because, uh, you know, uh, was it Flashpoint happens and there's like another reboot and, uh, you know, things keep changing again. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to keep track sometimes. And then uh, we get, we're almost current now because... Oh boy. Um, yeah, so at some point, Dick Grayson gets shot in the head and doesn't die, but he does forget who he is. Uh, so after he recovers, he starts calling himself uh, Rick Grayson, after Richard Grayson. Uh, and, uh, you know, basically, he, he starts finding himself again. <laughs> 
And, develop, you know, he moves to another city, finds a new girlfriend, develops a new cast of characters, right? Uh, and, oh boy, yeah, he, uh, you know, he, he starts his life again, <laughs> anew. Uh, but, you know, he, he doesn't remember anything really about Batman stuff, so he's Rick Grayson, as not, so he's not Dick Grayson. And he's, you know, his own man and stuff. Uh, until you realize that the reason he doesn't remember is because the Court of Owls used some sort of magic memory crystal on him that wiped his memories. So basically the Court of Owls come back and they, you know, they recruit him and turn him into their new Talon, right? Uh, and stuff happens and they stop him and they get him back only for the crystal to fall into the hands of the Joker. And this is where things get weird because the Joker... I guess he uh, he decides he's going to have a lot of fun with this. So what he does is he erases you know Dick Grayson's memories again, and now uh, he uh, he makes him think that the Joker is the one who raised him, uh, and he doesn't like the name Rick, and he doesn't like the name Dick or Richard, so he calls him Dicky Boy, and rewrites his memories so he, he thinks his name is Dicky Boy. So now he's Dicky Boy Grayson, or just Dicky Boy, and he's you know the Joker's psychic, <laughs> and there's a whole thing, and everyone has to team up to to get his brain back to normal. Uh, Batgirl, who's now Barbara Gordon again, because I think it's Flashpoint, uh, retcon the whole getting shot by the Joker in the spine. No, no, she still got sp shot in the spine by the Joker. It just didn't paralyze her. It just made her go through a year or so of uh, physical therapy before she could walk again. Uh, yeah, that's a whole thing. Uh, I mean, I liked some of the, the Batgirl stuff because it was written by Gail Simone, but then she got fired for being a woman off a woman's title or something. I don't know. There's a whole thing about that. Ugh, sorry, the cat's here and he's forcing his attentions on me. Uh, and so... Yeah, uh, they get the memory crystal back, and I guess they shatter it or something. And so I haven't read much yet, but I think this was like a year or so ago this happened. So now, you know, he's Dick Grayson again, and now he's got to deal with the fallout of, you know, having two lives. You know, his Dick Grayson life and his Rick Grayson life. You know, and his girlfriend from his Rick Grayson life, who he may or may not remember, I don't know. And stuff and of course he's got to rebuild his life again move to a new city get a new cast of characters and be the freaking nightwing uh he he was always meant to be again so that's what uh i don't know i lost count like five or six reboots just since like the 80s maybe even more uh it's been rough. It's not easy being Dick. Uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, that's kind of why I stopped reading it so much. Because, you know, like, it almost doesn't matter in the end. Because you can't get attached to anything. You know, because it's, it's like you're, uh, I don't know, the son of a you know, a military family or whatever, you know, your dad's going to get assigned to a new base every six months. So what's the point of making friends, right? What's the point of getting involved in Dick Grayson's life when it's going to change, you know, uh, every year and a half, right? Oh, man. So frustrating. And I like the character so, so much. Uh, so yeah, that that's, that's my story. All you need to know about Dick is what I'll title it, uh, which is not even remotely close to the truth. I mean, there's so many great stories. Like I said, you know, uh, Devin Grayson had a good run. Uh, George Perez and Mark Wolfman uh, on the Teen Titans did great. Uh, you know, the the 2000s Dick Grayson. Even Grayson was well written. It's just you know, uh, short. I mean. The, the Damian Wayne, Dick Grayson, Batman, and Robin stuff was great. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, 
Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff out there, but man, you know, you really have to love the character to keep reading it year after year when he's just, you know, jerked around so much, right? Because, you know, it doesn't matter how good his storyline is. If something serious is happening in Batman's storyline, it's going to screw his over, right? And if, a, you know, a world-destroying event happens, it's going to screw him over big time. I suppose I should talk about... Uh how I came to be thinking about this. Oh, like I said, I was thinking about uh, Nightwing in the shower. Well, maybe that's not the best way to say it, to phrase it, but yeah. And uh, it's because uh, I was going through some old books and uh, I picked up Hush Beyond, which is a Batman Beyond book. Uh, now, I kind of like Batman Beyond in the universe. Uh, for those of you who don't know, after Batman the Animated Series ended, uh, they uh, still want to do some Batman stuff. So they spun off uh, stories set like, I don't know, 60 years in the future or something like that. Well, I think only like 40 years in the future or 30. Where Batman's an old man and, uh, you know, he... Uh, he recruits a, another young waif. This one still has his parents, at least at the start. Then his dad gets killed. Uh, and then you turn find out that uh, genetically Bruce Wayne's his dad in Justice League. But that maybe we'll cover that later. It's, it's comic books. Well, this is actually comic book uh, uh, cartoons. But anywho... Uh, yeah, so, uh, basically, uh, you know, this young dark-haired waif who lost his dad, still has his mom, though, uh, works for Bruce Wayne, uh, as his personal aide, and by personal aide means he puts on this new, awesome, uh, like, essentially it's an Iron Man suit, but it's all black and got a red bat on it, right? Uh, it's, it's pretty cool design, right? But it lets him fly, it's got, like, stealth mode, Still has a utility belt with everything in it. Uh, and it's got like shields. I think he may be able to shoot lasers sometimes and other times not. Uh, it, it's it's pretty cool. That's why he's Batman Beyond. But uh, anyway, going to Hush Beyond. Uh, well, actually now I have to explain Hush, don't I? All right, so Hush was, I think he was early 2000s. They decided Batman didn't have enough enough cool villains currently so they uh they created hush i think it's uh from you know the nursery rhyme hush little baby you know don't say a word blah 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 blah. uh and he was a dude who walked around and his face was wrapped in bandages so you couldn't see who he was and you know he had studied batman for a long time and he had teamed up with his, pretty much his entire rogues gallery just to mess with him and eventually destroy him and it turned out that it was actually, Hush was his uh, best friend growing up, Thomas Elliot, who uh, was a, a little rich kid like uh, Bruce Wayne, who uh, lost his, well, one of his parents, the other one survived a car crash, <clears throat> excuse me, when he was uh, young. Uh, and, uh, you know, then he became a, a doctor, uh, just like Bruce Wayne's dad did. You know, a great surgeon, uh, or whatever. And I guess his motivation was he he tr he was the one who tried to kill his parents, uh, and uh, because he wanted the inheritance, and he was really really pissed that uh, Thomas Wayne, uh, Bruce Wayne's dad, managed to save his mom. Uh, so he vowed eternal revenge on the Wayne family. And after Martha and Thomas Wayne died, that meant just Bruce. Not really the best motivations. But yeah, apparently he was always, you know, a little bit smarter and more motivated than Bruce growing up. You know, he was always one-upping one them. And I guess instead of taking his revenge any time the past, like, I don't know, 20 years between the car crash and, you know, uh, the time of the comic book, he he bided his time for reasons unknown. Uh, so yeah, it 
It's a thing, and then, you know, uh, Batman beat him, and he disappeared, then he came back, and he died, and they realized, yeah, you know, he was kind of a dumb idea. Yeah, maybe if they hadn't have already done, you know, the mere darkly thing on Batman. You know, Batman's been around forever, right? And a hero is defined by his villains. That's a, a pretty basic tenet, right? And that's why uh, the best villains tend to be, you know, uh, mirror images or, you know, slightly warped versions of the hero, right? Like, uh, the Penguin, for example, is already the, you know, the old money guy, like, you know, as Tom Selly was. He's a, like the Wayne family, the Cobblepots were an old Gotham family. Right, a wealthy family, and whereas Batman uses his wealth for good, Cup Pot uses his wealth to amass more wealth and power. Right, the Riddler is a guy who's as smart as Batman, but you know he uses his brains to commit crimes. Right, the Joker is like he's the chaos. Right, you know he's basically anti-Batman because he's there to undo everything Batman has done right that's why pretty much every story uh where Batman goes away so too does the Joker right I think at one point he cut his own face off uh when Batman was dead for you know because he saw that Nicolas Cage John Travolta movie uh and yeah that's what happened in Dark Knight Returns too which we'll get to in a sec here uh, so, I mean, yeah, like, all, all his best villains are already, you know, twisted facets of, uh, you know, uh, Batman, uh, and his, uh, you know, his most notable traits, right? Uh, so, adding Hush in now, when he, you've already got, you know, so many people that fill you know, a, a part of the niche that Hush fills already, right? It really doesn't make for a character we care about. Because, like, well, you know, you could have had, you know, just got rid of Hush and just had the villains team up with each other anyway, right? Hush didn't really add much to the story. No, which is why I think they killed him off and kept him dead. So uh, then they do Hush Beyond because, you know, everybody got gets brought back eventually in Batman Beyond. There was actually a movie called Return of the Joker where the Joker comes back. Uh, uh, more on that in a bit. But in Hush Beyond, uh, it starts out with uh, a dude escaping a, a Cadmus laboratory, right, and killing a bunch of people. And then he starts going around. Uh, after he gets out, he starts killing batman villains retired batman villains or jailed batman villains right you know like ones we don't care about b-listers like calendar man christ i've thought of, about him since the dark halloween uh and stuff like just mm, things you don't really care about now when they're so technically active as opposed to jumping ahead 30 years where they're retired or you know dying in a hospital bed or wherever but uh you know he he's killing people only batman would know or care about right sending a message uh so bruce wayne and terry are trying to figure out what the hell's going on right and so when they you know when he's about to kill one dude or a lady in a, a hospital you know he tells her to hush right and so people start thinking and it's hush because apparently by now, like, everybody's super familiar with Batman's, you know, uh, cases, I guess you call them, right? So they know all about the history of Batman and all his villains, uh, which is whatever. But, uh, yeah, so the media starts calling him Hush, and he's walking around covered in bandages, right? And, uh, yeah, they, uh, they go try and figure things out. Right, and they talk to uh, first. They talk to Tim Drake because uh, uh, for a while in the well, I talked about uh, the Return of the Joker movie. Uh, Tim Drake was turning into Joker at night, uh, and uh, you know, doing Joker stuff. 
Uh, it is all because uh, in his last case with Batman when he was young, uh, Joker captured him and using his Joker chemicals and torture and brainwashing, Jokerized him into a, you know, a, a Joker Robin. Uh, uh, with the, you know, the big Joker smile and he, you know, was using him against Batman. And then and when Batman, you know, got him to break through his conditioning and I think, uh, yeah, he kills the Joker in the end. Uh, and uh, so that's the last of the Joker. That's the last of Tim Drake Robin. He retires after that. And then Batman retires a little bit after that, I think. Uh, the timeline's kind of screwed up, though, as we'll see. Uh, so, you know, he goes to Tim Drake and he's like, are you jokering again? And he's like, nope, uh, here's the proof. And so he goes next to, uh, well, Barbara Gordon is uh, the chief of police. Uh, so uh, she's doing her own investigation. And uh, so he goes to, uh, sorry, that was my uh, my tablet there. Uh, he goes to uh, Dick Grayson, uh, who's, you know, off on his own and he's, He's a, a grumpy asshole now, currently. Uh, is the only way to describe it. Yeah, he's just a, a grumpy, one-eyed asshole. And, you know, he's, he recounts, because in the Beyond Universe, Batman's driven pretty much everyone away. Well, Alfred died. So it's really just him and his uh, German Shepherd. No, it's a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd? I think it's a, a Rottweiler named Ace, who spend all day in the Batcave. You know, hanging out and then so i don't know what he was doing before uh uh terry came along to take the bat suit but now that terry's around he just basically you know mines computers and you know uh, uh gives him orders over the uh his earpiece or whatever but anyway he goes to dick grayson and dick grayson's a grumpy asshole he would re you know uh recounts his last time as uh you know nightwing uh and it's basically you know, Bruce, uh, uh, Bruce was too old to be Batman, pretty much, and, and he hadn't, you know, fought with anybody in a while, and he screwed up and got uh, Nightwing shot full of many, many bullets uh, by the Joker, which is odd because the Joker should have been dead by then because, you know, well, uh, Tim Drake had killed him a while ago because when we saw Tim Drake kill Joker, he was still pretty young, right? Yeah, so it's a little mix and match timeline stuff. But what do you expect? Jumping from a, you know, a cartoon from, was it the late 90s, early 2000s? Yeah, early 2000s, I think, to something made in like 2012. So anyway, yeah, Dick's pissed because Bruce got him shot. And then didn't even come visit in the hospital or say sorry. He sent Alfred once uh, with uh, his uh, his shot up Nightwing suit. Because Batman was chasing after the Joker. So when Nightwing got shot up, all Batman did was stop the bleeding as best he could. Uh, strip Nightwing naked so there was no proof he was Nightwing. And call the ambulance. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, he wakes up, you know, in, uh, in the hospital, shot full of pieces. Batman doesn't even visit him, just sends Alfred with his shot-up costume and a note saying that there's a new one ready for him if he wants it. And, you know, Dick's like, well, screw that. It's, I've had enough of this asshole. Like, it's a, it's a really dumb turn, right? But it it's the universe where Batman has driven everybody away, so I guess that's how it's got to be. So, uh... Uh, it's not Dick Grayson who's doing it, obviously, because, uh, you know, uh, we established that. He's got proof. And they dig around deep more, and they finally come face-to-face -face with Hush and rip off his bandages. And it is Dick Grayson. Remember how we talked about somebody escaping from Cadmus Labs at the beginning? Turns out that uh, Amanda Waller had cloned uh, Dick Grayson... Uh, because she thought, you know, she was going to clone Batman, but thought Batman uh, would make a very good soldier, uh, and Dick Grayson would. So they, they cloned Dick Grayson from 
uh, you know, DNA left when he was shot up by that Joker. And somehow the clone has all his memories. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I don't know how that works, to be honest. As all his memories right up to the point he was shot and they collected the DNA. And uh, they've been growing him in a vat for a while and uh, taking him out for tests periodically. And uh, that's when he woke up and they were testing him. And so he wasn't ready. And, uh, but he breaks free and now he's a psychopath because that makes sense. And uh, he's obsessed with being Batman to the point where he basically uh, wants to kill Batman, become Batman. Uh, but he'll settle for destroying Gotham and killing Batman. And then, I guess, being Batman in no Gotham? It, it's dumb, right? Uh, you know, he takes over some of Batman's bat robots that he just made. And uh, it takes, uh, you know, a... Uh, a Batman Beyond, a Terry McGinnis, his name, with a big, huge stab wound in his chest, but his suit has healing properties, apparently, so it's not that bad. Teamed up with uh, the current Catwoman, who doesn't even look like a cat, but she's called that because she can create nine uh, clones of herself at once. Kind of like, uh, you know, multiple man. Or whatever, except only, uh, only up to nine, and I'm not sure what happens when they die. If they die, like do if they if they get hurt, do they all get hurt? I don't know, but she does that, and I think she's only in this one book anyway. But she and uh, you know Batman Beyond have a a thing because you know Bat uh, Batman and Catwoman, they always got a flirt. Um, yeah, so uh, those two team up with. You know, old one-eyed Dick Grayson. Uh, you know, they take him out. Uh, and they do. And he gets impaled on his own... Uh, robot. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the thing. They, they, they knock him down a shaft just as his robot is flying up the shaft. And I guess his robot has a really spiky head. And just pierces his abdomen and kills him. It's, yeah, it's a dumb way to die. And considering that, you know, like, the original Dick Grayson survived much worse in terms of getting shot. Uh, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, it's a comic book story. It, it's not horrible. And it's more Batman Beyond, if you like Batman Beyond. But... It, it gave Dick Grayson the shaft, which has got me thinking about, you know, Dick Grayson getting the shaft. Because in a lot of these future things, he does get the shaft a lot. Like, say, uh, we already mentioned uh, The Dark Knight Returns, right? Uh, you know, uh, Batman Returns. He picks some spunky uh, street kid to be uh, a girl Robin or whatever. And, uh, you know, eventually the Joker returns because Batman returns and uh, a lot of other people return, uh, you know, uh, too. And it turns into a whole thing and, you know, Brainiac and Luther controlling the whole planet, essentially. And Batman sets everybody free, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then there's, you know, the Dark Knight Strikes Back or whoever as the sequel. But anyway, in those... Uh, you know, Dick Grayson, when he shows up, finally, uh, he's crazy, uh, obsessed with being Batman. Uh, I think he actually becomes a new Joker, uh, at this, in this one, because he's that obsessed with Batman. Uh, he, he burns the Martian Manhunter to death. Uh, and, yeah, he's just, I mean, it's, that one... Yeah, it gives Dick Grayson the shaft, but it's also Frank Miller, and, you know, Frank Miller is crazy. Like, you know, there's a theory that at some point he was just abducted by aliens and replaced with a bad clone, or he took, you know, got severe brain trauma 
because he's written some really, really good stuff. And then, you know, after the the first Dark Knight Returns there, ooh, it's just sort of, man. Like, uh, oh, wow. You know, it's just like some wackadoo stuff. I think it was about the time when he directed Sin City, uh, the movie. No, no, he didn't direct. I think he was just, I mean, he wrote Sin City, but I think he was just a producer on that. It was uh, the uh, the Will Eisner comic book movie. Oh, The Spirit. He directed that, I think. Uh, which is even worse than Sin City. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, Frank Miller, Miller, he likes violence. Like, well, he likes heroes being violent. And he likes, you know, sexy women's. Right. Uh, if you ever read like there's the director's cut of uh, issue one of all star Batman and Robin. Uh, and he's, you know, he's basically because he's a he I, I think he can draw. But I don't think he always draws. I'm not sure if he's a, a, an artist as well as a writer. Some are some are. Uh, I think. Uh, he, but he wasn't drawing that uh, All Star Batman and Robin, so he was describing for uh, whoever the the artist was uh, what he wanted, and you know so it was a scene where Vicky Vale was essentially giving us exposition, right? Uh, you know, being the reporter, and she was you know uh, writing her, uh, you know, dictating her uh, her report so far on Batman, and. She's in her apartment, staring out at Gotham City, and she's just in her, uh, like a, you know, a tank top in her panties, and, you know, he's like, and we start from a low shot to really show off her ass, and blah, 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 and yeah, like, you know, I mean, I have no problem if you want to, you know, draw sexy women in your books, right? You know, sex sells, and who doesn't want to look at a hot chick in her underwear, right? But, I mean, it's not a hot woman in their underwear story, right? So why are you giving it so much emphasis, <laughs> right? You know, just have her be, you know, sexy. Maybe she's in her, you know, underwear because she's, you know, uh, you know, too intent on her work. You know, she's a workaholic, so she just sort of, rolls out of bed and starts writing, right? She hasn't even had a shower yet or something. Uh, you know, do it like that. It's just, it's, you know, it's what they call it, cheesecake for cheesecake's sake, right? And All-Star Batman and Robin is just full of that. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, Batman and Catwoman just beat the shit, uh, like brutally beat the shit out of a bunch of uh, henchmen and then have sex on a dock in the rain well, a warehouse burns nearby. Uh, half in their costumes. Uh, which makes it hot, according to Crazy Steve. Uh, that's what, uh, if you ever watch uh, Linkara's YouTube videos, that's what he calls uh, Frank Miller's Batman, Crazy Steve. Because he's not really that Batman-y. But anyway, I'm getting off the Dick Grayson track. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, Frank Miller's Dick Grayson sucks. But, you know, uh, Frank Miller... Uh, you know, he's kind of, most, uh, authors get better as they age, but Frank Miller seems like, you know, he's kind of gone off the deep end with what he writes. Uh, what else? I mean, there's lots of other in the future stuff, but, you know, Dick Grayson doesn't show up too much. He shows up as Red Robin, uh, in, uh, 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 Kingdom Come, which is a really good book, uh, uh, drawn by Alex Ross, who's probably my second favorite. Uh, he's, he's, uh, Alex Ross is really great at, like, these beautiful, uh, golden age, uh, like, super detailed golden age style, but, like, sort of, you know, if someone were to paint a port, uh, like a, you know, a classical portrait of a golden age superhero, that's what, uh, you know, Alex Ross would, uh, do. He, he's just really that great uh it's uh and so he, the grayson shows up there he doesn't really do much 
And he's not on Batman's side. He's on Superman's side. It's, yeah, I don't want to spoil it. It's, it's, a, it's a good book. You know, loosely based off of Revelations. Uh, you know, the Bible. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, he's probably showed up in other places. I do not remember if I've read them. Uh, I'm just sort of racking my brain right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's been in a lot of tie-ins. Like I said, uh, he's he led uh, the reboot of the uh, the Outsiders. Uh, uh, the Outsiders were like a, well, they were a, a superhero team that uh, wasn't the Justice League and sort of did off the books jobs uh, that Batman led back in the day. I think it was the 80s or maybe the 70s it was started. Uh, that's where Katana got her big break. Uh, if you ever watch Teen Titans, there's that girl Tara who shows up in that in uh later stuff uh her brother is part of the outsiders uh but anyway you know uh uh what's his face uh roy harper reassemble like assembles a team for a job uh and it goes bad so he calls nightwing in i hope i think and nightwing ends up taking it over until i said like i said earlier uh he just sort of like he has a tough time so he's just like you know what batman you can run it I don't care. Whatever. Uh, it kind of sucks. I mean, you know, they, they wanted Batman, Batman back in charge, and, you know, I, they didn't really handle it too well. Uh, I mean, you know, it's not like Nightwing can't lead a team. You know, he's led several, right? Like, he's Batman's chosen heir. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Uh, whatever. Uh, yeah, that's, that's all I got to say, uh, two hours and six minutes and 54 seconds, uh, I've talked about, uh, Dick Grayson. There's a whole lot more we could talk about. I mean, there's tons of great storylines, right? Uh, you know, from, uh, early storylines to, uh, uh, Teen Titans storylines to Sequin Nightwing or Tassel Nightwing, uh, storylines, uh, Robin Year One. I think it's called. Uh, it was really good. Uh, uh, basically, it's you know uh, an early story of uh, of uh, Batman and Robin team ups, uh, where uh, that's where uh, Dick Grayson got you know beat oh, nearly beat to death uh, by uh, Two Face with the baseball bat. Uh, yeah, they they did they. they Actually, they dovetailed it quite well into when they made uh, Harvey Dent go crazy again because he was obsessed with uh, the new Batman when it was Dick Grayson because uh, he was uh, the first person to twig to the fact that it wasn't Bruce Wayne. Well, except for maybe the Joker, but you know the Joker disappeared because he knew it wasn't uh, his Batman, and so it was no fun for him. Uh, yeah, so that's Nightwing. Uh, or original Robin, or Dick Grayson, or Red Robin. Uh, he's had a lot of a lot of names. Uh, over the years, uh, and a lot of jobs. You know, uh, leading Teen Titans, uh, leading the Teen Titans in the cartoon. Uh, um, oh, leading Young Justice. If you haven't seen Young Justice, uh. That, you know, it's short. It's three seasons, I think. But it is a really well done uh, superhero uh, tale. Like, unlike Teen Titans or Justice League, it, it really focused on a longer arc. You know, it still had villains of the week and all that. But they uh, they really spent more time uh, developing, a, you know, a, a, a full story arc from beginning to end. That each sort of uh, episode filters into at least a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, if you want to know some good uh, stuff to read or watch, uh, let me know. Uh, thanks for listening. I'm not sure I'll ever do this again, but if I do, uh, I hope you listen to that too. Uh, thanks, uh, and goodbye.